John here and this is your Tuesday Blues where every single Tuesday we come together and we cover cool acoustic blues, licks, riffs, concepts, chords, ideas, anything that will help you become a better acoustic blues player. And that's what we're going to get into right now by covering that ragtime piece that you just heard. There's quite a lot of finger picking skills that you're going to need to develop to get up to a piece like that. So this can be one that's really a great skill building tune to learn. And it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. A lot of notes coming at you, so premium members have access to download the tab and the interactive tab player so you can slow down, loop this stuff, and go at your own pace. But we're going to break this thing down step by step here. Let's get into it. First off, it's in the key of C, but that can be relatively uh, meaningless in ragtime because there's so many key uh, or so many chords outside of the key. If you need a little bit of help with that, check out this lesson that I've got here on the crazy ragtime progression. But it's in the key of C, and we're going to keep an alternating bass going throughout. And it's a two string alternation in each case over each chord where we're going to use our thumb to play the bass, and over the C, it's the fifth string string, fourth string alternation, then we move to an E7, and it's the sixth string, fourth string alternation, then A, which is going to be an, a long A chord here, and you'll see we'll move down and play some A7 tones there, but the bass is going to be back to our fifth string, fourth string alternation, just two note alternation in each case, and then we're going to play this form of a D7, same string set for the bass, 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four. and then finally a G, and we're going to play some G7 as well, but the bass is just like our E chord, 6th string, 4th string, 6th string, 4th string. All right, let's get to the melody that happens on top. There's no doubt the, uh, the challenging bit is to not only just play this, but to play it with something else happening on top. And that little piece that I just played is where we're going to start our study here. There's some licks and things coming a little bit later, so hang in there, but this is the main theme and the main melody. We start out with that bass, and on the end of one, we do what's probably going to be one of the more difficult things in this, this whole study, right off the bat. So maybe it's good to go ahead and get this challenge knocked out and out of the way, and then we can roll on a little bit. What we're going to do is play the bass, and then on the end of one, you've got kind of an uncomfortable stretch happening, for most of us anyway, between the ring finger and the little finger. That's coming up to the fourth fret on the second string before we move the bass to the um, E on the second fret of the fourth string, and we're going to pinch along with another melody note, this time the open first string. So a pair of E's. And then we come back to the C on the second string. Now, what's really cool about this is we're playing with that minor third to major third move. It sounds really great. You hear it a lot in ragtime blues and in blues in general. So what that means is the E is the major third of C. We got a couple of them in this form right here. So if we hit that E flat, that's our minor third and then we're gonna roll into that major third. It's the equivalent of doing this. And it sounds really good and really kind of brings out the major sound of this. And that's the rest of the measure. So after we do that stretch, we come back and play that C on the second string. Then we're gonna pinch with the bass and the open first string. Then on the end of our 3B, we're going to play the G on top before a bass note by itself. The easiest note in the whole measure. All right, playing that slowly. 
All right, now we're going to transition into much easier measure, an E7 chord, right? So go ahead and fret that up for measure two. Remember, our bass is going six, four, six, four. And we're going to throw some notes in between there. On the end of one, we're playing the G sharp. And then on the end of two, the E. And then on the end of three, the D. That's the flat seven. That gives it the spice that dominant seventh spice right before wrapping up on the bass note E on beat four so these two measures together sound like this then we roll into our A7 chord where we start off really in A so that's one beat by itself uh, beat one there then we pinch with our E and our high A. Then beat three is a pinch with the G on top. And of three is another G. And then we're going to play the bass. And then on the end of four, we've got that C sharp under the bar here. And we've got another measure on A with the same tones involved. So here's the picking for this measure. This is now measure four. The only thing different is we're gonna play that C sharp on the fifth uh, string, fourth fret. The reason is we're walking into that D7 chord, all right? And here the picking is So that's two measures, and you can hear that we're playing really with these tones, but we're bringing in some other tones outside of this chord. It really gives it a cool vibe, and it keeps the melody moving a little bit as well. So the picking here, remember the bass is uh, moving between the fifth string and fourth string. That's on the quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one. The real trick to this part is right here. Right there, I flatten out my little finger and my ring finger really kind of comes along for the ride there, although it's not necessary, but that knuckle collapses down to catch the E on the second string. Kind of gives us a D9 vibe. And then we move this index finger for the second bar on our D7 chord, move it to the G to play that little bit of the melody. So that's on the G on the third fret, first string, and then open, and then back to our D before closing out the picking there. Now we move into the G chord part, but we're really gonna play through a lick, and I love this. This entire progression really, to me, moves toward this little uh, G chord picking. And we're gonna make use of that minor third to major third move, but with respect to the G chord. So our uh, notes there would be moving from, say, B, that's the major third, down to that B flat. So you're gonna hear a lot of that kind of interplay between those two notes. So here's the picking. All right, did you catch the minor third to major third move? It wasn't fretted. We were making use of the B flat here on the third string and the open second string. And that provides just a little bit of scrub because you can play these two at the same time, minor third, major third, right? So there's a little bit of overtone just for a second when you're playing it. Just give that a shot. Just kind of roll through and get used to that sound and get used to fingering this in this way. There's a reason that I'm fretting my G chord like this. I tend to do that a lot unless I'm just doing some cowboy chord strumming stuff. And the reason is because really easy 
easy to slip back and catch that F note if I want to get into G7, which country blues, you're definitely going to use the seventh chord variation of just about any chord. So this sets me up nicely to do this over G. All right, back to this. All right, so we've got and of one is where we start off with that B flat. And then we've got two, we're pinching the bass and that B. On the and, we come back to the B flat. But then we're gonna pinch the bass, which is the sixth string at this point, and then the open uh, B before coming down on the D to kind of help that melody along. Then it's just bass and then the G, kind of as a filler note there to end us out of that measure. Then, kind of like we did with our A chord, we're uh, plucking the octaves here. Bass and then flatten out the pitch on the first string from G all the way down to F and you get that cool G7 vibe. That's another really cool move. So we didn't do the E flat to E there, but we did do the E to end us out of this. We did the D to E, really cool. All right. From here, you're gonna want to get in C position to start the idea over again. Now there's gonna be a little bit of a hitch in the second half. There's some differences with the second eight bar section. I'm gonna point that out, but let's recap what we've done so far. Alright, for the second half of this, we're going to keep a lot of things the same. So I'm going to move rather quickly through measures where it's basically the same as before, and I'm just going to point out the differences. But we do have a major difference right there in the first measure of the second set of eight bars, and that's this bit. Remember that we're ending with this. Right? And before we would have started that measure like this. But instead what we're going to do is really play up that minor third to major third move by doing that. So we're starting off pinching with the bass and the first string open. And then you're going to want to hold that fourth fret second string. So this definitely takes you a minute to stretch out to spread the fingers out so that you can catch that because we're going to repeat that note and really kind of highlight that major third uh, or that minor third up to the major third move. Or actually in this case, it's reverse. We're starting with the major third. All right, so just kind of repeating those two strings on top. But then on the end of three, we're going down to the D on the second string third fret and pulling off down to the C for beat four. All right, now we move into our E7, and the only thing that's changing here is we're gonna start off with an open second string. So E really at this point, rather than E7. We're gonna put that D note in at the end of the measure, just like before, but we wanna start it off with that B, kind of finishing out the melody from before. Then we hop into our A and nothing's changed. Come up to the D. Nothing has changed until we get to this part. Remember when we did the G's on top? The only thing we're gonna change is that second G is going to flatten out to an F sharp. Pretty cool. And there's definitely some stretching happening here. So if you can see one skill that you're really gonna work here is the ability to stretch over an entire fret. So we've got a two fret span here in between 
first finger and second finger, and then of course here, uh, you know, stretching up with this uh, finger set here between the ring and the little finger. All right, back to the picking. Our D7. With that move, as we flatten it out and just add something a little different to the melody there. And then we're at the final couple of measures, which is actually where we started in the intro. And we've got a really cool lick coming at you. All right, let's talk about that lick. We're gonna really leave behind our alternating bass and we're just gonna focus on the notes. This is a lick in true form. We're breaking from our picking and we're just gonna pluck out this thing and have some fun here. We start out with the bass note, then on the end of one we slide up from the minor third to major third of G, our chord here then hit that D on the second string third fret, then come up to the F uh, on the first string and then open. Finish out that measure, going back to the second string third fret, the D, and then open second. All right, and then one more measure, we were going to hit that B flat, and then pull off from the A down to the G, but then we're gonna come up and hammer from the first fret of the fourth string up to the second, the E note, then hit that G again before just walking up. One, two, three. Those are the fret numbers as we walk into that C. You could start this whole thing again, you know, right there, um, or end it with a big old C chord. All right, I'm gonna play through this entire arrangement up to tempo so that you know where you're going, but be sure to practice at your own pace. It's much more important to me that you play slowly and perfectly rather than fast and sloppy. And if you dig what we're doing here, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that you're notified when these lessons go live each and every week. And consider becoming a premium member. We've got some really cool things going on in there. We've got hundreds of lessons with the materials you need to nail them, like tab and even an interactive tab player. We're up to over 40 step-by-step -step courses and I've just released a fingerstyle roadmap that will start you out day one of finger picking and move you all the way through to playing some much more complicated stuff, kind of like what we did here today. So if you really want to improve your finger picking skills, BGI is the place to do it. Check out premium membership. All right, let's play this thing. Until next time, practice smart and play on.